Welcome back to another shiny new episode of Defending the Despised, the series where I take a cyber-sized dive into some of the most hated and disliked episodes in Doctor Who history. This time, I'm taking a roller coaster ride into the Series 7 episode, Nightmare in Silver. Nightmare in Silver is an episode a lot of people hate. I don't know why. It's a solid episode written by a fantastic writer, but it has been heralded as one of the worst episodes of the much maligned Series 7. But is this episode really as bad as people like to claim? Let's hop on the Cyber Express and take a look for ourselves. Nightmare in Silver follows the Doctor and Clara as they are forced to take Angie and Artie on a trip in the TARDIS. Because they're kids, the Doctor decides to take them to a theme park. However, in true Doctor Who fashion, the theme park turns out to be filled with Cybermen. Because of course it is. The episode centres around the Cyber Planner as it takes over the Doctor's mind and rebuilds a Cyberman army to take over the universe. You know, just a regular Saturday night for the TARDIS crew. Nightmare in Silver is written by world-renowned writer Neil Gaiman, who also wrote the critically acclaimed Series 6 episode, The Doctor's Wife. Due to Gaiman's success with anything he puts his pen to, he was in high demand, meaning that writing another time-consuming Doctor Who episode was not something Gaiman was willing to commit to. However, showrunner Stephen Moffat offered him an episode for the upcoming second half of Series 7, suggesting that Gaiman could use it to revamp the ever-popular Cybermen. By this point, the Cybermen had barely changed since their return in the 2006 episode Rise of the Cybermen. Gaiman was a long-term Doctor Who fan, and he fondly remembered the cybernetic villains from their encounters with everyone's favourite recorder playing Doctor, Patrick Troughton. Gaiman felt that the Cybermen should be regularly updating, especially since modern technology is developing rapidly. The starting point really for the Cybermen, for me, was looking around and noticing how much technology changes. He also decided that he would make the Cybermen more stealthy, since the most recent versions had been the big metal stompy boys from a parallel world. Because the Cybermen had entered the real universe, it would only make sense that they would have come across the original Mondashian Cybermen and merged together. I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of the Cybermen constantly updating during battle. It makes them just a little bit overpowered, because the only way to destroy the whole army is complete nuclear annihilation. And even then it doesn't always work. That being said, their battle upgrades do create some interesting moments in the climax, because it ups the stakes for the protagonists, making their situation seem hopeless. There's nothing they can do, even the Doctor can't help. I actually really like the idea of a giant Cyberman army. It's one that's been used before, but never to this scale or threat. It makes them more threatening and gives them a whole new layer. Their cybernetic monsters hellbent on bending the universe to their will. Why wouldn't they build a huge death army? We only ever saw the Cybermen directly related to Earth. But Nightmare and Silver re-establishes that they're a universal threat that expanded across the universe. I also like the world building Gaiman does in this episode. You really get the sense that this is a planet ravaged by war. It's a nice juxtaposition, since it's a theme park, a place which has always been a friendly and fun atmosphere. But in this case, it's a battleground. It's quite eerie and unsettling, kind of like the ferris wheel in Chernobyl. It's not supposed to be like that. There's a lot of lore built into this episode, hinting at a much wider and much bloodier conflict. Nightmare in Silver was actually supposed to build to a wider storyline. It was originally going to end with a scene featuring Cybermen from throughout the show's history, implying that there was a much wider plan to snare the Doctor. It's a shame we didn't get that, to be honest. It's much better than the botched Great Intelligence stuff we ended up with in Series 7b. The episode is hugely important for Clara's story arc. She has to take charge of the situation because the Doctor is compromised. Clara is thrown into this role of being a military commander. 
It's completely out of her comfort zone, even though she had been travelling through space and time for quite a while at this point. She has to step into the Doctor's role, which fuels her desire to become just like him. The fact that she succeeds at it only serves to further this desire, because she knows she can do it. This leads her to become even more determined to be like the Doctor, which is something I've spoken about before. Speaking of the Doctor, his role in this episode is fascinating. Matt Smith does a great job playing two different roles. The Cyber Planner character gives him the chance to play a villainous role, much like Patrick Troughton as Salamander in Enemy of the World. It's really interesting to watch the Doctor and the Cyber Planner interact, doing battle with each other. It allows us to see a darker side of the Doctor, even if it isn't actually him. There are some really good parts when you can't even tell if it's the Cyber Planner or the Doctor in control. They have a much better chance of getting out of this situation alive than you do. Which one of you said that? Me. Cyber Planner. This shows us that the Doctor has an ever-present dark side, one that has become clearer since the Doctor lost Amy and Rory. It's almost like the Cyber Planner knowingly taps into this dark side in order to dominate the Doctor's mind. These scenes are so beautifully shot and directed, the contrast between blue and orange really works well, giving the mind battle sequences a really slick and cinematic feel. They're simply stunning, along with the rest of the episode. It's honestly a good looking episode, much like a lot of Series 7. Director Stephen Wolfenden does a superb job bringing Gaiman's unique vision to life. The rich colours add so much to Nightmare in Silver, making the dull grey of the Cybermen seem even more out of place and alien. The only thing I can understand people hating about Nightmare in Silver is the child acting. Much like in The Forest of the Night, the kids in this episode can be just a little bit annoying, I can't lie. But much like in The Forest of the Night, what do you expect? They're kids, they're not going to be pulling off Oscar worthy performances. Artie and Angie are annoying, but they're kind of supposed to be. They're annoying kids, they always were, and it gets everyone else into trouble. Lastly, Porridge is a very interesting character. He purposefully mirrors the Doctor himself, because he can't face the genocide he committed to end a war. I feel like a monster sometimes. Why? Because instead of mourning a billion trillion dead people, I just feel sorry for the poor blight of that to press the button and blow it all up. The Doctor believed he detonated the moment to end the Time War, and Porridge destroyed an entire galaxy full of people to end the war with the Cybermen. Much like the Doctor, he can't live with that guilt, so he ran away. Porridge claims being Emperor is the loneliest job in the universe, which is very similar to the Doctor often being the loneliest person in the universe. You know, you act like such a lonely man. Neither of them wanted the responsibilities they were born into, leading to them running and hiding after making an impossible decision. It's a subtle way of linking the episode to the 50th anniversary special Day of the Doctor, which came almost directly after Nightmare in Silver. Like I say with most episodes I cover in this series, Nightmare in Silver is no masterpiece. But is it really as bad as people claim? Not at all. Neil Gaiman is a brilliant writer. He's even gone on record to say his script was heavily changed, and the episode was completely different to how he wanted it. That being said, it's still a good episode. I feel like people only really hate it for the child acting. Sure it isn't great, but I don't think it's bad enough to completely ruin the whole episode, especially after how good Matt Smith performs. It's a solid Cyberman episode with a unique, imaginative setting. I've always enjoyed Nightmare and Silver, there's nothing really wrong with it in my eyes. But what do you think? Is it a Cybermite in the rough, or does it deserve the reputation it has developed? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.